I'll be discussing, okay, no, I can hide now, but I'm not hiding. This afternoon, I'll be discussing food crisis and the, the impending food crisis and the causes, how we can reduce or avoid it or prevention of it, and uh, a lot of things. I'll be discussing them this afternoon. So, now, you've been hearing everywhere there's going to be food. What exactly do we mean by food crisis? Food crisis means there will be scarcity of food. There will be, uh, as in, there will be no food will not be planted in circulation, as in food productions. And already you are experiencing it wherever you are. The price of what you are buying or whatever you are buying in the market has reduced. As in, the price has increased. As in, you are looking for something. Ten or twenty people are looking for it, and. Um, yeah, it's caused by so many reasons. Now, I'm going to briefly mention, I'm not going to spend so much time, so I'm going to briefly mention the reasons why there are, there will be possible increase in food prices and um, why there will be possible increase in food prices. One, one major reason why food is a bit getting scarce right now that we've been facing before now is droughts. There was drought in dry season, in rainy season, and this year is already predicted that there will be drought again. What is meant by drought is that it's, we're supposed to be in rainy season, but rain is not falling. As in, in the, or in the middle of rainy season, when everybody has finished planting, then there will be possibility of rain stopping. And if rain stops and the crop do not get rain, it means they will die. That's one cause. The second cause is X-Men, bandits, and so many other things. You can see the north every day they are killing 20 they are killing 100 so farmers are farmers have run away from the farm they finish killing them the northerns northerners are the ones that produce major food store but right now they've been reduced the farmers they have greatly reduced and in the southwestern south southwestern most especially we are battling its main issue as in uh cattle we go and destroy farms and destroy food stores and everything that's another causes of scarcity now the third one that might possibly the fourth one that happened sometimes last year is covid people believe covid during the covid session see there's a lot of things people didn't understand about covid last year there was a blockage as in people were not allowed food were not moving from the rural side to the city i know i even traveled from the city to the i remember i followed a truck i followed the truck going to supply food in lagos to go and supply food and it was it was it was tough crossing the road to Lagos. You know, every police post they were collecting 500 naira, 1,000 naira from the driver. You know who pay for that? The farmers that is bringing the food, or the middleman, and then it gets back to the. You know, you know that kind of steps. So that is another third reason why food is becoming a major issue. Now, during that COVID, because we could not move our food stuff out, like some of us have tomatoes and all these things, because we could not move them to Lagos or to the areas where we were selling, we threw some of them away. Remember, there was no preservation. So some of these foodstuffs were thrown away. And because some of these foodstuffs were thrown away, we were not able to, uh, farmer was running at a loss. So part of what is making food to be a bit scarce. The fourth one right now is the war. Yeah, I'm sure you know if you are like the rural, if you are if you are like the rural farmer like me, that I normally believe that what's happening in the world does not concern me. After all, I'm in the village. Now I'm going to tell you how the war in Ukraine and Russia is going to affect you as an individual. I'm sure each every every household in Nigeria eats bread. Bread is made from wheat. Wheat is, pro is imported from Russia and Ukraine. So now you know how it's going to affect you. It means the price of bread is going to go up. It's not only bread. There are other things. Even sometimes maize are imported from, uh, from Russia. Those countries are major agricultural area of the world. So this, and Nigeria is one of the countries that depend, that depend on them for all these things. So you so what it means is that they are going to the now okay there's war in ukraine because there's war in ukraine it means this farming season those citizens will not be able to plant there's uh, there's they won't be able to produce any crop it means nothing is coming to nigeria you can see it's already affecting petrol fuel and everything because we are importing after we send the raw material we import the finished material you know, but I'm talking about food stuff here. So you can see, so there's impending food crisis. We also import fish and some other things from Ukraine and Russia. And yes, Nigeria imports a lot. So it's not that we cannot produce them in Nigeria, but you know, 
the farmers are not equipped to produce. You know, if you want to produce those kind of things, you need a lot, you need equipment, as in, you don't expect me to use oil and cutlass to produce food for 100 people. Rather, I'll be able to produce for two or three people. Now, those are the causes of impending. You know, when we say impending, it's like, okay, this thing is coming. It's coming gradually. This is what we are going to be facing. Now, let me go. As a farmer, if you are watching this as a farmer, how do you reduce? How do you control? How do you salvage your own day? Now, this is what I will tell people. Okay? Another factor, again, another factor that is going to make food to be extremely costly is farm workers. I know in some other video I've discussed so much about farm workers. So I'm telling you again that farm workers is another impending factor. This is March. Farm workers are not coming from Benetogo. I learned some of them too are having, there's a lot of issues anyway. You might not understand it because you're not a farmer. If you're a farmer, you understand what I'm saying. So those are the factors I've mentioned about five that are, that are, that are going to make food to increase. You already feel it already. It's not that I'm the one just telling you. You already know food prices are already increasing. Now, that's aside. Now let's look at what can you do? One, if you're not a farmer, you are here, you're watching me, the first thing you should do is start planting something beside your house. I've said this several times. Pack soil, pack cow dung. Do you know, we normally pack, before they used to dash us, uh, poultry waste, as in they come, come and pack it, they love it, just take it, take it, take it, I don't want it. Now, poultry waste is money because they know we're using it to plant and food is becoming scarce. So, look for poultry waste. Nobody, might, they might not dash you now, you have to buy. Like I understand the bag is about <laughs> so start planting something close to your house. Honestly, you will save cost. You will save cost. The other thing about it is that I have a training called sack farming. You can get in touch, get it, and study how you can do sack farming at the back of your window, at the in a small space. The small space is small. Sweet potato, all these things, plant some food. Now, if you're a farmer like me, yes, we still want to plant and sell to you. The first target you should think of this year if you are planting anything is irrigation. Where is your source of water? I already told you, uh, nine mist. Don't mind me, my pronunciations are not too good. I'm a farmer. So uh, it's not an excuse anyway, but okay. So uh, nine mist already predicted that rain, uh, rain is going to be, there is going to be droughts. Remember when I started, I said drought means the scarcity of rain in between the rainy season. For instance, like rain has started, as in this is March, maybe rain will fall today, it will fall. In. If rain is falling every two, two days or every three, three days, it's fine for farmers. Crops will be fine. But if rain falls, two, two, falls like a week, then stop for like two weeks, crops are dead already. Crops cannot survive staying without rainfall for two weeks. And it happens. So it's those period when rain did not fall, that two weeks period or that three weeks period when rain did not fall is what we call drought. So it is that drought period that usually destroy crop. And that is what is actually reducing food in the, I've told you part of what is reducing food stuff. That is what's making food to be very scarce. So if you are planning to farm as a farmer, Relax first. One, relax. Sit down. Take your pen and your biro and do your calculation. Okay, which food do I want to plant? Is it maize? Is it is it rice? Is it beans? Is it uh, just decide and make sure it's something that have markets. Plan it. Okay, which ones are people looking for? I know maize is hot commodity. Virtually every food is hot commodity now. You can, if you notice, poultry and everything, they are closing up because they could not really afford the cost of buying maize for their livestock and everything. So those are high commodity. You should not get to understand high commodity produce. Don't follow because I said, follow something, research and know what you can plant to market. That's why I say relax, then calculate then plan irrigation you see it's rainy season actually already the rural farmers are running around they are clearing land and they are preparing for the irrigation by the time they finish clearing and they prepare for the irrigation they'll find out that if this is not clear on in Kadishila, you can go to farm villa farm villa has a clear network don't mind me farm villa has a clearer network where you can watch so now if if uh if if you don't uh, if you don't plan irrigation if you plant your maize and then all of a sudden in the middle of the rainy season, water stops for two weeks or for three weeks, everything is going dead. I've made this example. Last year, I remember there's a woman close to my farm here. She cultivated about 100 acres. 
by the time she and you know what she bought hybrid seed she bought hybrid seed she has tractor she has planter she used planter so they were closely planted she follows almost every recommended good agricultural practices but there was no irrigation when that uh drought came now drought will not tell you when it will come nimex is guess is guesswork like they say okay between so so and between so so but you don't know whether that period will be in your own area or in my own area remember we have different area and different location the farmer was telling you about they put in everything they even use manure they use manure they plant closely 25 meters because they use tr tractor planter they use so many things together but at the end of the day there was drought but you know they did not plan for irrigation they lost all the farm yes it was a massive loss because everything dried up the maize dried up without maturing so that's why i said instead of them instead of that 100 acres we are planning to do why don't you just reduce it to like uh, uh instead of 100 acres why don't you just reduce it to 50. so at 50 acres if you reduce to 50 acres at 50 acres you can now use the monument for the extra 50 to plan irrigation with that, honestly, you will make a lot. You will recover your money back if you use irrigation rather than losing the old farms and uh, spending so much on the farm. Yeah, the network on Yinka is gone as usual and it's always messing up. But the class continue. You will join us. Okay, in Kadeshala is back. So your class continue, you join us. So you need to plan, you need to relax, you plan, you irrigate, and then you need to plan your market. Like I said, there's possibility now market will keep increasing. But there's one thing, even if you assume there's market, there's market, don't just plant. You need to enter that market, go to that market, verify what is happening in the market. Don't listen to hearsay. See, the way how we sell in my own area is quite different from the way you will get to sell in your own area. So I need to plan my own area. I can only tell you what is happening in my own side. I cannot tell you what will happen in your own side. I can always predict or give you prices of what is happening in my own side, but I cannot give you prices of what is happening in your own side. So these little things, and then again, plan batch planting. What did I mean by batch planting? By batch planting, I mean, okay, instead of you have that 100 acre, you might not do the 100 acre, plant them in 20, okay, in, uh, in, the, in LA, LA, April, plant like 20 acre. In the middle of April, plant another 20 acre. In the early May, plant 20 acre. You know, you're already spacing it. If you plant the 100 acre at once and you don't have irrigation and there was drought, you might have problem. But if you take them 20, 20, 20 after each other, they will be at different, different, different stages and you might be able to salvage. That is when you don't have money for, for irrigation. But actually, it is very preferable for you to plant irrigation along. There's climate change and nobody can really predict what will happen. I hope I've been able to pass some information across to you. If you have any question, please drop it in the comments. I'll respond to it or check another of my live video that I will still be doing. So guys, thank you for watching this. And if it's useful to you, you could also share with somebody. You see, when you share with somebody, it's easy for us to create a network where we can, okay, look for a way to sort our problem rather than, okay, I know this is what I'll do on my own and I'm taking it alone so guys catch you next time and uh, in another topic okay thank you